Welcome back to the community, everyone, and thanks for being part of it. I really appreciate all the comments, the likes, especially the likes really helps get the algorithm up and the films out there for people. If you get a chance, check out the website. I really need to catch up on it. My email box is full to get people's cars up in the members ride section. Even if they're projects, that's fine. Today, we're going to go ahead and get the frame head all cleaned up and rust bullet. Our first time using Rust Bullet, as you can see here, it's not horrible, but it needs cleaned up and protected. Uh, what we're going to do is use Rust Bullet. I'll show you that in a minute. And during the filming, when I'm wire wheeling, so to speak, and cleaning up, I'll speed those parts of the film up so you don't get bored. Okay, it's bad enough you get stuck with me. Uh, during the rust bullet procedure, I won't speed that up because I won't need to because I'll be talking during it. Uh, rust bullet was used by a couple of my friends almost five years ago. Dang, this stuff holds up great. It really does. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go over a couple of things first. And after that, let's get on it and get it done. Okay, so you could see we're the dirtiest clothes possible when you're doing this because if not, you're going to destroy good clothes. So I keep certain clothes for certain things. You know, as you probably caught in some of my films, I have nice clothes on. It just depends what you're doing, you know. Uh, what I'm going to do after I vacuum and clean that loose stuff up in there, this is a, I call it a paint stripper. It's a very hard foam material, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. You can get them at Walmart or your local hardware store. I've never tried this yet. I usually use a wire wheel. But I have wire wheels on hand. If I don't like what's going on, you'll see me swap it out. But I want to try this and see what it's like. I've never tried one yet, and I've seen a couple other people using them. So we're going to go ahead, vacuum that up. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning everything up with this. And at certain points, I am going to speed the film up. And then, of course, when we start with the rust bullet, I'll show you what came in the package, and I won't speed that film up there. So, okay. Let's start out. Okay, so first let's get this loose stuff out of here. I'll go ahead and speed this up and put some music here so you don't hear the vacuum. Now as you can see, this frame head is in really, really nice condition. It's clean. The only problems I have is at the back end of the car, which will make right, so no worries. I'm going to go ahead and do this area. I'm not doing the firewall today, okay, but I am doing the bottom pan here, the frame head, the front of the frame head, and maybe we'll do underneath, but I'm just doing it to show how this rust bullet works, and basically, you know, we'll show it again a couple years down the road, but I don't really need to prove that just because of friends using it. We're going to go ahead now and try that foam whatever it is, paint stripper on there and get it down to the bare metal. Now we're going to have to go over a few things with the rust bullet because there's a procedure with it. Okay, and always put a vacuum cap over your fuel line because you don't want stuff getting inside of there. And when you're doing the front of the frame head where your four bolts go through to hold your front beam on, Always maybe put a little tape over, and if you can't, it's okay, because I know the wire wheel's going to knock it out of the way. And make sure then that you clean them threads up real good, chase them, you know, with a uh, tap, just to clean them up so you don't cause an issue. So let's go ahead and get some safety gear on. And I can't emphasize enough to use a dust mask, a good quality one, okay, and use air protection. I use these at the range, so I also use them in the garage. Trust me on this. I'm getting older and I can tell my ears are ringing now a little bit. It's a little harder to breathe from years of not using protection. Cover that mouth and nose up for when you're doing this type of stuff. And get your ears plugged off while you're doing this stuff. Sorry about the lecture. Had to say something.
So we got the one side cleaned up here. I'm going to take a wire brush and get inside of there. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera temporarily. Clean this side up just so you could see what I was doing. I'll clean this side up and before I wipe anything down or do anything, I will be right back and then I'll show you the procedure with the rust bullet and we'll get this nice. Uh, it's definitely something that you might want to do for some longevity. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay. As you can see now, I have it all cleaned up. Remember, I'm not doing the firewall today. I'm not going to drag this out real long. I'm going to try to keep this film short. Uh, I went ahead and wire wheeled everything. Now you don't have to get every ounce of everything off. They even said that you can go ahead and if you have rust on a frame of a truck, knock off all the loose stuff and just wire brush it the best you can. You just, you need the loose stuff off. Although I did wire wheel this pretty good. I did use Awesome. I get that from the dollar store. If you use this, this stuff is potent it's weird because it's from the dollar store. If you use this, wear a mask. It's almost like battery acid or something crazy, but this stuff, it says no acid. I don't know about that. It cleans. So make sure you keep a mask on. Okay. So I used awesome and wiped it all down to get the heavy crappy stuff off, you know, and we're going to go over the rust bullet package now of what came in it. And then we'll go ahead and use it. Okay. I didn't think to pause a minute. <laughs> and get you on a better angle, this frame head is really solid. It honestly is. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we take care of it. I got to do the firewall and scrape all that old tar and crap off of there. But like I said, it's just a frame head today and to apply the uh, rust bullet. So, okay, let's go over the package contents. So this is our package we got in the mail. Uh, I'll go over this stuff briefly with you, but one thing you're going to need is some plastic gloves or latex rubber gloves. You don't want this on your hands. It's not fun to get off. And uh, of course, I always say to wear a dust mask. That's just me, you know. So let's see what came in it. They have different packages available. I didn't clean my garage up yet. <laughs> They have different packages available. Uh, you can go to their website right there and you can get multiple different kind of packages that they have, different colors, what have you. And you can spray this, roll it, or brush it. I'm going to brush it. All right, so what do we have here? We have a quart. You see that? Now this is black. Okay, and this is the 244th day of 2021. Can you see that? Okay, so this is still good, and you can get it in gray. There's other colors. So they sent me two quarts because I want to do the hole underneath the car, the inner wells, and everything. So there is the door grade rust bullet. And this, the label's not on it. Let me get a rag because I spilt some. This would be the solution for when you're mixing, I believe, to shoot through a gun. Okay. And this here is Metal Blast that comes with it. All right. And I've seen some it carries it also or Rust Bullet themselves. because you want to spray this on before you actually put the rust bullet on. So you definitely need to use this because not only does it clean the metal up and gets the oils off from your skin or anything if you've touched it, but also it's kind of like, almost like using an etching primer before painting. It's the same type of effect, okay? And one thing about the rust bullet, and I'm going over this stuff for a reason, because if you do it and it peels or don't work, it's your own fault. And you put your coat on, which we're going to do. You have to wait two to four hours to add another coat where it's dry to touch. If you wait longer than 24 hours, I say 20 hours, 
then you need to scuff it down lightly with like 150 grit and make it a little bit rough before you put your second coat on. But if you do it every two to four hours, you'll be fine and you can put two coats. I like three, but that's just me. I'm overkill sometimes. But let's go ahead, get our gear on, and we'll wipe everything down with the metal blast and go ahead and start brushing it on. I advise using a cheap paintbrush because you're going to be throwing it out. So let's get on it. Okay. So we have our metal blast and we're going to go ahead. It's a surface conditioner, but you definitely want to turn the nozzle. You want to clean this off good. Plus, like I said, I believe it works like a, an etching type primer. You know, it helps the paint bond to the metal surface. So I'm going to let it sit there a second. And we're going to go ahead and wipe it off. After I wipe this off, I am going to use my blow gun from the air compressor. And just make sure I blow everything out of there. You never know. I try to get everything as clean as I possibly can for uh, the paint to adhere good. And you definitely want to do that because you don't want any of this wet. So go over here. I know my buddy's old Ford truck. He, uh, I should have took some pictures of that. He used this four or five years ago. It's been a while and man, this stuff held up amazing and he drives through winter and everything. Never a problem. So I trust it and I'm glad they were nice enough to send me some because I didn't have to pay for it. And it's not crazy expensive, but buying another car is. So you gotta spend a little bit of money. It's worth it. So we are over at the dirty workbench that I definitely will clean in a day or two. <laughs> Whole garage is bad. As you can see, it comes with these little clips. So if something crazy happens in the mail, you don't have rust bullet all over the place. So that's a very smart way of shipping. I think I'm going to save these. Put on some paint cans I have in a garage. Okay, so we're gonna have to open this up and stir thoroughly, and it says it, stir thoroughly, blah, blah, blah. But you wanna stir it for at least two, three minutes. So let me bring you up close here, close enough. Let's get her opened up. Like I said, there's different colors on her website. She even asked me, do you want gray, you know, dark gray, light gray, black, candy apple. Okay, I made that one up, you know that. Okay, so let me get a rag here and a paint stick. And we're gonna go ahead and stir it. It's very thick. Ooh, and it probably should have been warmed up a little bit. Good for brushing. I like the, the thickness of it. It's supposed to be thick though, so I like that. I almost got the gray, but then I figured it, uh, it might look silly, you know, underneath my car, so. But let me go ahead and get this stirred up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we got it all stirred up. We're gonna go ahead and take our old brush. I shouldn't say old brush, cheap brush. And like I said, buy a cheap brush. Don't buy expensive brushes to do this, okay? Now, when you're putting this on, make sure to put it on in nice, even coats. Don't just sit there and act like a nut job when you're trying to do it, okay? So, it is a little thick, which is a good thing. 
You're going to just brush it on. Sometimes you might have a couple little misses. It's okay because you can always come back. Let me move this over. I didn't know I was in front of you. This is an odd angle to try to record. So forgive me there. I always try my best to get you guys in <clears throat> and up close. Okay. It's just like kind of like painting your house more or less. Of course, don't paint your house with this. I think they actually sell stuff for your garage floor. I could have swore I seen it on their website. I'll have to check into it because if they do, I'll be sure to buy it because I want to power wash my floor, clean it, and seal it with something. And I'm not using Rust Oleum's epoxy primer or epoxy paint because I see what it did to my buddy's floor. It was a nightmare. So just a little tidbit there. Okay. Wow, this stuff goes on nice. Wow. Nice and smooth and thick. Woo! Don't knock your paint over. I guess you know that though, huh? Get it real good. Like I said, you're gonna be doing a second coat and a third coat and it is two to four hours apart. You gotta be dry to the touch. It's only 60 degrees in here today. So it's probably not the best time to be doing this, but it's okay. You can even warm your metal up a little if you have a heat gun. I like doing that sometimes. Let me get in front of you a minute. And let's do the other side. Let me move the camera. I'm gonna go down below so I'm not blocking. And then you can see it's nice and thick and it covers extremely easy. You don't really have to keep going over it, nor you shouldn't anyhow. Okay, see how thick that is? And like I said, you're going to be putting another couple coats on two to four hours apart. Yeah, I repeated myself again. So sometimes people will fast forward through the film and miss vital parts and say later, I didn't know. And that's why you should always try to focus on the whole film so you don't miss anything. We're all humans. Nobody's perfect. Get my lid put on and let's go over a couple things and I'll show you something and that'll be it. I'll let you go. So let's get up a little close and personal here. That stuff looks like glass. I don't know how it looks on film because high definition cameras seem to pull in stuff that the naked eye can't even see. But I love this stuff. I wouldn't even push it for except I know people that have used it. So that was just a quick tutorial on it and I appreciate them sending me it because I got it for free and I like free. However, I was going to purchase it anyhow. So they caught me in the nick of time. <laughs> but okay, that's what the first cut looks like. And let's go over a couple things and I'm gonna let you get back to your normal life. So that was the Rust Bullet Fund. We're far from done with it because I know you guys are following me along with the whole project and everything I do. And that is so awesome because I don't feel bad to do some of these films. Next week, we're gonna be doing the underneath of the floor pans and heater channels. Obviously, I'm gonna be speeding a lot of the film up so you don't have to, like I did today, I sped certain parts up and deleted. Outside of that, this Rust Bullet's amazing. You can go to their website. No, it's not a promo. I don't have a promo code or anything to offer you. The only thing I could say is it's good quality. If you would like to purchase it, go ahead. You won't be upset with the use of it. Now, hear me out a second, okay? I've had seen some people on YouTube where they're saying it peeled off. Okay, it peeled off because you didn't prep the surface properly. I know people that have used this for years. It's just like doing body work. 
you don't prep your body work, bad things are going to happen. You can have a guy with the best paint gun in the world, 30 years experience, but if the car's not prepped right, you're going to have issues. And it's just the same as rust bullet, prep, prep, prep. What I did, I used awesome. They didn't say to, I just did a little bit of overkill. You take the awesome from the dollar store. I like it. It's a good cleaner and clean it really well. Blow it out with your air gun or compressed air, whatever you have. A lot of you out there, I keep telling you, by the way, I know I'm talking a lot. To use an air gun, you say, I can't afford a compressor. Hey, I know we're not made of money. Go to Harbor Freight and buy a $50 one. A little pancake one, just enough to blow stuff off. Cheap. You don't have to spend three, four hundred bucks, like I'm going to do shortly for a big compressor, because you're going to watch me paint this car, and we're going to get on the underneath of it because I got to work my way to the back, and I do have to go back to that junkyard this weekend because I'm going to cut out some sections. Here, I'll show you. I got crap everywhere, don't I? See that? Yuck. Okay, I'm going to go to the junkyard and cut that good section out of another beetle. That way I have that good German metal in there. And then, of course, here, I cleaned this all up, got the tar off of it. We have holes, holes. Yeah, you know, what I'm going to do, I'll show you. I was going to order a brand new panel and it's this section here but he told me to come down to the yard and cut this whole section out of a good one he has there because the rest of the car was wrecked and what we're going to do is drill these spot welds okay we got to keep the body stabilized so it don't move and this body mount will disconnect from this panel we're going to cut the panel we're going to slide it out, slide the new panel in the good one, weld it, and then weld this back. And I made it sound easy, didn't I? That was, I just wanted to show you what's coming and what's going on. So I'll do a quick film at the junkyard. I don't want to bore you once again, uh, but I am going to probably take my camera with me and film cutting out them sections and a few things. So thanks for being here and I'll see you next week. I hope everybody's safe, healthy, and happy.